And are we live? We're live, thank you. Um, welcome, good evening. Uh, this, I'm gonna call this meeting to order. This is the Historic Districts Review Board uh, hearing for uh, Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. Uh, Melissa, may we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Member Guida. Here. Member Aguilar Medrano. Member Berkeley. Yes. Member Beachside. Here. Member Bienvenu. Here. Member Larson. Here. And Chair Rios is excused. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I want to welcome our new two new board members, Madeline Aguilar and Jennifer Berkeley. I think we're going to hear a little bit more about them in a little while, um, but we're so happy to have you join us tonight. Um, Next item is the approval of the agenda. Um, Carly uh, or staff, are there any changes to the agenda tonight? Oh, Heather. We do. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we have a, a few changes. One item is um, the facts, facts, and conclusions for a 50 mil per mil will be delayed until the next hearing. Um, so we have. Um, case number, uh, let's see, the first item under new business for 6-5, Camino de los Animas, uh, will be postponed. Um, and uh, the, I, under, excuse me, under new business item number four, uh, 220 Rodriguez Street is also um, uh, being postponed. Okay. Um, do we have any other changes to the tonight's agenda? Okay, I will entertain a motion. Larson moves to approve the agenda as amended. Each side seconds. Okay, Melissa, can we have a roll call vote, please? Member Aguilar Medrano? Yes. Member Berkeley? Yes. Um, and can you please turn on your microphones when you speak? Thank you. Member Beachay? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Member Larson. Yes. The motion has been approved. Thank you. Um, moving on, we have the approval of minutes from August 9th, 2022. Are there any changes to the minutes? Jennifer. Thank you. I have one change on page 35, paragraph 7, the second to last sentence. Please revise the sentence to read, she recalled it was just facades 2 and 3 and not facade 1. Thank you. Any other changes? No other changes, but I'd just like to note that the new um, board members, since they were not there, should not vote on the minutes. Excellent. So, uh, Thank you, Heather. have a quorum, so we'll be able to okay. approve them nonetheless, if that's your pleasure. Okay. Board members, can we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Each side moves to approve the minutes as amended. In the new seconds. Thank you. Uh, Melissa, may we have a roll call vote, please? Member Aguilar Medrano? I will abstain from this vote. Member Berkeley? Abstain. Member Beachside? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Yes. Member Larson? Abstain. Um, Mr. Attorney, does the chair need to vote in this so we have three to approve the minutes? Look this up recently passes upon the majority of the members voting, not the majority of the members present. So, uh, in my opinion, that the vote passed. Okay. The motion has been approved. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, findings of fact and conclusions of law. There are two, uh, 342 Plaza Valentine, uh, 333 West Manhattan. Um, but we are not um, reviewing uh, 50 Mount Carmel. Uh, do we have any changes? findings of fact and conclusion. Okay, none. Uh, may we have a motion? Each side moves to approve the findings of fact and conclusions of law for case numbers 2022-005161 HDRB and 22, I'm sorry, 2022-005465 HDRB. Thank you. Do we have a second? The end of new seconds. Thank you, Melissa. Roll call vote, please. Member Aguilar Medrano. Same. 
Member Berkeley? Abstain. Member Breedscheid? Yes. Member Bienvenu? Yes. Member Larson? Abstain. Thank you. The motion has been approved. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, matters from the public. Um, members of the public wishing to speak, please move to the podium. Um, we are going to be limited to two minutes for public comment. I still do appreciate it. Chairman Guido, thank you. Good evening, John. Hi. I just had a procedural question. At Looking at the HTML file that was sent out, uh, there are, well, there's one packet that appeared to be missing electronically. And I don't know if this has any bearing on your meeting tonight at all. Is this the 220 Rodriguez Street? No, it's new business. Uh, 458 coming here last night, must. Yes. Yes, that was postponed. It was, okay. The agenda had been published, but we were not able to. Okay. So we postponed okay. that tonight. The April that's all I, that's all I wanted. To, and you probably mentioned that when you mentioned the agenda change, changing, right? Correct. Okay. Thanks to staff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And welcome to the new, new board members. I appreciate the fact that you're here. Take care. Uh, Stephanie Beninato, I do have a, a couple of things. Procedural question or concern from last time. Um, there were only four of you here, and on the Lucchese, or Lucchese as I would say it, Lucchese as I would say it, um, not knowing when the hard and the soft sea are in Italian, um, is uh, questionable because you didn't have a majority of the members present voting for it. You had two people voting for it, one against, and the chair did not vote. When there was another issue like this, the chair insisted on voting because they are, it says, a majority of the members, not of those who vote normally, but of the members. So I'm thinking that your approval of that sign um, exceptions is flawed, fatally flawed, actually. Um, the other thing is I still need suggestions from people in the preservation community about carpenters who have the experience to restore and renovate the floors at La Posada. As I've said before, the library floor, which is a parquet floor, it's beautiful as are all the floors are actually in there, is literally disintegrating as you look at it. And um, the corporate manager, property manager, is totally willing to go forward Unfortunately, the carpenter who was going to do it got injured and can no longer be squatting up and down um, as required for the job. So I'm hoping that I will hear from somebody. My name is, you put my name in the internet, you will find my contact information. And then the other thing that as a lawyer who actually wants people to follow the law, it's deeply disturbing to me um, when we have board members approving things because of a sensitive design. That might make it in architectural ease, but it is not a, a, a criteria, criterion in the law. So if it's not in the law and you don't go with the spirit of the law, you go with the words in the law. And so by doing and approving things that are sensitive designed or are um, excuse me, or of the spirit of the law, you are opening yourself up to appeals. You are opening yourself up to charges of subjectivity, and you are a quasi-judicial body, which means that you are actually supposed to be implementing the law. If you don't like the law, then I would suggest that you go to city council and ask them to change it rather than you unilaterally doing that as an appointed official. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Any other matters from the public? Okay, let's move on to staff communications. Carly or Heather? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so we have just a couple things. We've had some staff outages um, as you, um, and then I am in the sky tonight. So um, you'll see some just, um, there's presentations happening by uh, the assistant director, Heather Lamboy, uh, tonight, so they may not follow exactly the name who was on the case, just because 
We've been navigating some of that internally, but we should be back on a regular schedule um, on the 13th. Um, uh, other than that, welcome to the new board members. We're very excited to have you here. Uh, and I hope that everybody is noticing that we do have one door open, and it should be the Lincoln side. Uh, as you enter through, I'll just continue to make that announcement. As you enter for the, the meetings, um, it should just be that Lincoln side um, that we're using right now. And that is all. Okay. And I would like to echo the welcome to our new members. I think it would be really nice for the, the board members to know a little bit about you. So if you can give us a little introduction, both for the benefit of the board members as well as the public. Um, we'd love to learn about you. Um, Commissioner Aguilar Medrano, Medrano, right? So we will fix that actually and have yeah, no your whole name there <laughs> next time. Well, hello and thank you to everyone for having me and my fellow board members. I'm really excited to be here. Um, my name is Madeline Aguilar Medrano. I know it's a mouthful, <laughs> um, but a little bit about me. I was born and raised uh, in Santa Fe. My family's been here for generations. Um, my love for the city and the unique sense of place, you know, that Santa Fe embodies is ultimately what led me to pursue um, my degree in landscape architecture. So I'm a practicing landscape architect. I work for a local firm and I have been for the past seven years. Uh, prior to that, I worked for the planning department for the Albuquerque Public Schools. So I also have a degree um, in environmental planning and design. And I'm really looking forward to sharing some of these skills with my city and my community and, and hoping to be um, of benefit to you all. Thank you for having me. Great, thank you. Board members, Berkeley. For, thank you so much, actually, for inviting me to join you on this very important board. It's a very important part of our city. Um, I've actually had experience here with this board twice, um, once as a homeowner. Um, I brought my case before the board to make some, I would just say, upgrades to it a little bit. It was in bad condition, and it was met with approval, and happily we got through the process very smoothly, and we later actually won an award for it, the Sarah Melton Preservation Award. And so I appreciated that. And then the second time was just this last year as the director of the Spanish Colonial Arts Society, and we received an award for our museum for the work that we've done there. So I'm just happy to be a part of it. I'm not from here. I have owned a house here for over 10 years. Um, my family was originally born here 100 years ago, but we moved to California. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And I know it's going to be a lot of effort and a lot of hours, and I just want you to know that staff really appreciates all the time that you give to our community. So um, we look forward to working with you and also continuing to work with our board members, who are just fabulous. So uh, that can, that's all for staff communications. Thank you, Heather. I'm H. Chairman Guida. Yes. Um, I did want to share with the public, uh, since there has been concern expressed about this a number of times, uh, when we have a quorum present, even though uh, a very, very small number of members may vote, a majority vote does pass, even if the vote is two to one or two to nothing. Um, there were resolutions passed by the city council or governing body 1984-56 and 2009-20 under Article 112A, a chairperson cannot vote except to break a tie. And that is Article 11, uh, uh, subsection 2, subsection B, um, and furthermore, Robert's Rules of Order, which we default to if there's no resolution that conflicts with Robert's Rules, under 4 colon 56, and, and Ms. Beninato, you can, you're welcome to look these up and share your thoughts with me. Um, you know, I'm always glad to discuss this with a member of the public. Well, okay. Um, Section 4, colon 56, Robert's Rules recommends that a chair on the small board not vote in order to protect his impartial position, uh, which is consistent with the city's resolutions that the chair not vote. Furthermore, uh, this came up in uh, a meeting at the April 12th board meeting, which also Chairman um, Guido, which member Guido was the acting chair uh, under the absence of uh, Ms. Rios and Mr. Katz, who were the chair and vice chair of the board, um, regarding an outdoor dining space at 72 West Marcy Street, which is the Boca, Boca Cafe, passing on a two to one vote. Under Robert's rules, the chair could have only voted to create a tie. The motion would have failed, but in the case of a motion which passes by one vote, City Resolution 2009 20 
prohibits the chair from voting to create a tie. That supersedes Robert's rules, but, but on the question of whether having only three voting members would be short of a quorum, Robert's rules, section 40 colon 1, reads, and I'm quoting Robert's rules, section 40 colon 1, the quorum refers to the number of members present, not to the number actually voting on a particular question. So therefore, even if you have a minority of members voting on an issue, the fact that they by themselves would not constitute a quorum is immaterial. The fact that there is a quorum present, um, the number of members actually voting on the particular question decides the question best if it passes on a majority vote of two to zero or two to one, uh, or for that matter, presumably even one to nothing, you know, the matter would pass. So that's, that's my research on that issue. Somebody has to challenge that. That's what I'll stand on. Right. Right. Attorney Rubile, thank you for explaining that again. I'm hoping that uh, as we can now have new board members, we won't be running into that situation too often. Um, I'm going to move on to our cases for tonight. Um, before we begin, I just want to note to the applicants that if you disagree with the decisions of this board, uh, you have an option to appeal. Um, 15 days after the findings of fact and conclusions of law are approved. Um, tonight we have five cases total, three under old business, two under new. Um, just uh, by way of uh, uh, procedural issues, um, you know, this board has a, a light caseload tonight, but um, in the interest of time and fairness to all applicants at all hearings, uh, I'm going to limit uh, staff uh, briefs to uh, two to three minutes. Um, we'll move, unless there are any pressing clarification questions, we'll move directly to uh, applicant presentations. Uh, typically those will be five minutes. We ask applicants to be succinct. Uh, we'll then move on to board discussion and public comment will again be limited to two minutes. Um, okay, so the first case. Um, is 1500 Canyon Road. Um, this is Carly's case. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. See. All right. So we've seen this case uh, before. This is, or at least the new members haven't, but uh, this has come before you before. Uh, this is 1500 Canyon Road. As a reminder, it is the uh, Mateus Martinez uh, historic farm. Um, and it is a uh, subject matter of the case is the garage. Um, we do have uh, some updated drawings based on board comments the last time it came forward. Um, uh, this comes now with a recommendation um, uh, for approval. Um, uh, and it, it, it does fall within the downtown east side. So I'll just point out some overviews. Um, and here are the images of the elevations. Um, the site plan, and we're looking at the garage right here. Um, this is our uh, proposed site plan, so there's a little additional wall that's being added. Um, and then we'll skip down to the elevations um, just so that we're uh, clear about what we're looking at. And I think um, uh, there's a little cutoff on this image here, but uh, we have a little stove pipe here. We've got an overhang, and we do have an increase of height now from 9, 10, 9, 9 feet 10 inches to 11 feet. Uh, of course, the non-historic windows are replaced, um, as you see, and then there are these uh, rectangular wood beams um, under the overhang. Um, and, um, and then, of course, the um, window, uh, multi-light window on the south elevation uh, and we have um, a, a change of the design that was seen from the last hearing um, and to the, from a double door to a triple door um, that has some of the details. Now the, um, the uh, architectural details, so the, white, the windows are to be painted white um, and uh, it went we, what we saw last time was a brick chimney. We were looking at a little stovepipe chimney. Um, and, uh, but this does not show the little wall in the front, so I'm just going to point that out. Um, and that is all on this one. Um, oh, 
and here are the samples. Um, roof material has gone to a corrugated uh, metal um, unsealed to patina over time. Um, and then I, from there, I can either answer questions for the board or I can turn it over to um, the applicant, Will. Thank you, Carly. Uh, any clarification questions from the board? Okay, let's move to the applicant. Do we have our applicant present? Do you swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. Jim Powell, 1601 Don Gaspar. Good evening, Ms. Powell. Good evening, everybody. I, I stand for any questions. There, there is one clarification. Um, the, the stovepipe, the chimney, is actually drawn as a terracotta futile. Um, I know the board had asked for a stovepipe. Building owner asked for. Can, may we ask you to speak directly into the microphone? Yes, sir. Sorry. Thank you. Is that a little better? Yes. This up. Okay. Um, the the building owner had asked for a clay, a clay flue tile as opposed to a stovepipe, and if the board doesn't like doesn't want to approve that, then we'll just leave the chimney off. Okay. So that was the only thing. Um, so that is not a stovepipe. That is a clay flue tile. Thank you. And so tonight, uh, as Carly pointed out, we are considering the changes in the design from last time uh, based on the direction of the board uh, to more closely uh, uh, for the design of the roof to more closely match the original um, for uh, their, for the doors on the side of the building uh, to more closely match the garage door opening that was there. Um, any questions? from the board for our applicant, Member Benvenu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to say, first of all, it's more of a comment than a question. Um, I really very much appreciate the design changes that you've made. I hope that you agree with the board that uh, this is a really big improvement. Um, you know, what was being proposed before was a very attractive building. But this really um, enables you to accomplish all that you need to make this a livable space and really retains, in my opinion, the character of that building, which is so important. So I really commend you for that. I will say, however, I do still think that the stovepipe is a preferable design solution. I can understand why the owner might prefer something different, but the stovepipe would be much more consistent with this as a, as a garage, uh, very typical. And I think the, uh, the other option would perhaps stand out as being um, inharmonious. So I'm much in favor of this design, but I would prefer to see the stovepipe. Thank you. Is that something you would consider? I uh, appreciate that. Um, as my dad always said, two heads are better than one. So sometimes looking at drawings a different way always helps. Um, regarding the stovepipe, I had a long conversation with the the building owner, and so we would leave off any any chimneys if, if, if that was the only way to go forward. But I will say, um, to put, put a nudge towards the clay flue tile, from the period, clay flue tiles were, were representative in the 30s and the 40s, which is the building age. So that's something that was very common here. And I think the lines actually look a little better than a, than a stovepipe personally, but I'll leave that up for the board. So again, uh, we don't want to delay this any further if, if you choose, but that is not the direction forward. We will just remove it altogether. I have a, just a question about the clay uh, flue uh, pipe. Um, would a spark arrestor be required to go on top of that? Would we say? Very likely would, yeah. And that, and that would be metal? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, really, with both instances, whether it was a stove pipe or a clay flue pile, there would be a spark arrestor required. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Yes. Member Aguilar. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure this is the intent, um, but I think it would be helpful just to add um, an extra notation on bullet point nine um, that the yard wall stucco will match the, gr uh, the garage finish of El Rey La Luz. 
I do see that's um, called out in bullet point three, uh, but just so that we're all on the same page that that's the color intended for the garage and the yard wall in front of it. And then my second comment was that um, I did notice the sconce, the exterior sconce on one of the last pages, but I didn't see that reflected on any of the elevations. So if, uh, the location of those proposed sconces could be added. Good eye. You must be an architect. Um, yeah, the, the wall sconce, I, I left it off the drawing. That was my mistake. It would be um, flanking the garage doors. Um, and you know, we hadn't decided if we were going to use two or one. So I guess on the spot, I would probably just put one. It's a modest structure. And I think it would be best located on the, as we're viewing it, the right wall because we have a, a larger wall there. Any further comments? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, board members, if, uh, if that's all, I think we'll take this to the public. Members of the public wishing to speak? And just to note, we have none online. But Thank you. Attendees. Thank you, Carly. You swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is John Eddy. My address is P.O. Box 845, Tezuka, New Mexico. Uh, thank you, Chair Guida. I really appreciate the acumen of uh, Board Member Bienvenu. And uh, I think the uh, stovepipe issue was something that I spoke to earlier. And I really do feel that it is most appropriate on this building. Uh, I appreciate the applicant's idea of going to um, the flue pipe, but I do think that the stovepipe is more appropriate. Given that it will be capped more than likely by a conical metal spark arrestor, the flue pipe more than likely would be the spark arrestor employed there would probably be what we would consider kind of a more modern kind of thing that you can buy. And I have them on my house. So that kind of detracts as well from the building. So I do appreciate and also the comments from uh, Ms. Aguilar. I think were also very, very uh, graciously put and to the point. So thank you very much. Thank you, John. You swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Stephanie Beninato, P.O. Box 1601, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Kind of feeding in and out here. Um, I like the door design, but I wonder why there has to be three um, as opposed to the two that were originally suggested. Um, and it would seem that two would be the normal use in a garage, two doors, not necessarily three. Um, it also seems to take away from the mass on that side of the building. It is west, so do we need, would you need more light coming from the west to overheat your building or not? Um, I think that is a question. Um, I appreciate that the applicant would only use one sconce um, as opposed to two. I do hope the sconce is not only mm, lit so that it doesn't go up as required by law, but also doesn't go out. Because going out, I have many lights on my street that go out, and they go out well over 100 feet. Um, and it really is a, a disturbance of the dark, dark sky, dark night. And I think anything that we can do to help preserve that um, is important. And I just want to make a note um, of what Mr. Rubalid has uh, talked about, which is that term majority. And I know we had this discussion before, but majority is not 50%. So if you have four people sitting there and two vote for it, that's not a majority. Majority is more than 50%. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, any other public comments online or in person? Um, okay, we'll go back to the board. Board members, any further discussion or maybe a motion? Um, I'll make a motion. Please. In case 2022 005375 HDRB 1500 Canyon Road, 
Um, I move to approve the application with the following um, corrections. Um, the first being that th there will be one sconce um, on the west elevation withdrawing, clarifying that submitted to staff. Um, and the second being that the yard wall will be stuccoed in El Rey La Luz. Um, and the third um, being that the chimney pipe is of a metal chimney pipe and that that amendment is also um, submitted to staff. Thank you, Member Larson. Do we have a second? In the new seconds. Thank you. Roll call vote. Right. Oh, sorry. Point of discussion. Um, sure. Clarification. Did you um, intend to, sorry, is the condition that a metal stovepipe be approved? I think I heard the applicant say they would prefer to no chimney to that option. Um, I, I would personally be fine with either. Um, I, you know, I appreciate that this is being um, used or reused adaptively um, as a casita with, you know, a fireplace. So, um, for me personally, I'm fine with either. I think that it's a minimally obtrusive. Um, amendment to this existing structure. Um, and I agree with Member Bienvenu's earlier comments that um, it would be, and also the applicant's comments about that, how this would be in keeping with the um, historic period and um, the structure type. Mem Member Larson, the, the motion is either metal flue pipe or not at all. Thank you, yes. Um, the motion is either having a metal flue pipe or no flue pipe at all. Um, with the amendment of that um, being proposed to staff for approval. Thank you. Member Benvenu, acceptable? Second, second as amended. Okay, wonderful. Melissa, may we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Member Aguilar Medrano. Yes. Member Berkeley. Yes. Member Beachside. Yes. Member Bienvenu. Yes. Member Larson. Yes. The motion has been approved. Wonderful. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Okay, moving on to the second case under old business. This is 571 Garcia Street, in the downtown and east side historic district. This is Carly's case. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is also under old business. So um, the board has seen this uh, before. If you were uh, newer, you, you would not have. So it's 571 Garcia Street, it's located in the downtown east side, just off of Garcia Street and Johnson Lane, right on the corner. Um, to give a, a brief overview of what uh, came before uh, in the last hearing, the, um, the board uh, voted to downgrade the structure. As you can see, this is the original uh, contributing structure on the property, um, and then it has this guest house. Um, that's been added in the front um, at a larger height. So um, guest house in the front here with the two, with the uh, stairs, the kind of stepping from the massing that's happening. And then back in the back that's not outlined is the newer, uh, or sorry, the historic house. Okay, and so, and that is also outlined. The guest house is in, uh, in the front of uh, the main house. Um, built in 2005, and this had the additions on the back. So, um, the uh, what we are looking at today is this project area outlined here. Um, here are some images of the house. There's the historic house. Um, go ahead and scoop down. Um, it's outlined in red. That's the project area. We are looking at essentially a portal covering that's attached to both of the structures. There is also a fountain included. Um, there's hardscaping that's coming with this, but um, within the board's purview is the structure between and um, and the fountain. Oops. So, and then a blow up of that dashed in are the portal is the portal there. Okay. And there's some raising to a parapet, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So this is the change that you see on the west elevation within the courtyard. This, so this is the historic um, uh, house, that side. And this is, um, uh, if you flip in the other, turn around, look the other way in the courtyard, uh, this is the uh, guest house. So you can see there's a bit of a raised parapet to allow for these um, wood beams to hand-hewn wood beams to go 
um, all the way through to that uh, parapet there. Okay, and we also we do have a trellis as part of this, which you can see right here. This is a still trellis uh, behind the very tall walls. Okay, and then um, you see some slight changes on this, this uh, south elevation here. And this is the elevation that faces Johnson Lane, and the north elevation. Um, is right up against the wall in the property line, but here it is, and there's a view to the trellis. Um, it's very small, you can uh, see it there. Um, and uh, on the west elevation from the front of the house, if you're standing in front of the house, you can see just that raised parapet here um, in the back. All right. Um, so um, we do recommend this. It does, um, as it complies with the downtown east side and all uh, historic district standards. Um, with that, I can turn it over to the applicant or answer questions. Board members. Yes, Member Aguilar. Um, can staff clarify for me, is it within the board's purview to comment on exterior lighting if it's included in the application packet? It is. Um, generally, we uh, do exterior lighting as a um, administrative approval item. We do lump all of everything we can into the same application so it goes nice and smoothly through permits. That said, if um, it is seen as kind of that is it is part of the package and it is definitely a part of the board, um, what the board can comment on in board purview. Um, that said, um, uh, I'll say it's just note that this is a uh, now non-contributing property um, and uh, and answer any other questions that you might have on this. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members? Okay. Uh, we have the applicant. Please come to the podium and be sworn in. Do you swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. Stella Trujillo, 133 West Houghton Street, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87505. Good evening, Mr. Trujillo. Hello. Um, what do you have to tell us? Uh, as far as the lighting, that uh, the question that came up, um, we are proposing to have lighting uh, at the steps. Um, the client, I, I actually propose to have it all one level, as, you, as, but you, as we do come down from the gate. Um, um, we, uh, she didn't want to do one level. She wanted to just keep, keep the steps the way they are. So I propose that we provide some lighting because uh, at the steps, and it would be hidden um, at a, on, a, on a nosing, so you wouldn't see it. I just want the user to be able to um, be able to step, make those steps, and with with safety at night because it is. Uh, especially if you're having a, an entertaining or something out there and people aren't aware there's a step, then that could be problematic. So that's the lighting I'm proposing. So it'll be hidden, it'll be way down below, it'll be at step level. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Board members, questions for the applicant? Member Larson. Um, thank you. Is there a proposed um, finish to the adobe wall, or will it be left um, unplastered? Uh, the, the the old adobe wall that's in the background are you talking about? Um, I saw there's an item for replacement or repair of a adobe wall. Yeah, there there's an old adobe wall that's actually falling apart, and it actually has Spanish tile. Mm -hmm. um, As a capping. At the top of it. And uh, they just need to repair it. And so, um, I think they'll, they'll probably repair it with um, uh, stucco, um, and it'll match the house. Thank you. Oh, just to clarify, the proposal is to stucco that adobe wall. Yeah, I, I, I would. I, 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 we haven't got that far yet. I mean, we could plaster it with mud, but it won't last very long. So, um, and they're going to go through all the trouble to repair it. I think they should work on something long term. Um, I, I, I personally, I, I have an experience where I have a mud plaster wall outside, and it has not held out very well with the rain. 
that, you know, with the, late, the rain we've been getting. So I think it would be uh, uh, better for them to stucco it. And just to repair it is the most important part. Okay. Anything further? Um, I don't think I have any further questions. I was just concerned about, you know, the, the clarity of repair. So that really helps. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Under Thank you, Chair Guida. Um, so general, I, I'd like to focus just for a minute on the trellis and the pergola. You've indicated they're, they're um, I think there's some wood members, but they're basically steel, and there's a steel, there are steel corbels, if I'm not mistaken, on the pergola. No, that was the last meeting. We got, uh, because of, we were able to, to, down, to downgrade it, we wanted to simplify it, and uh, uh, that, uh, we got rid of the uh, corbels, and, uh, I, I just didn't want to be sticking the, the corbels into the wall because there's always a problem with um, water damage. Um, so the, the the pergola, which is the higher structure, is is all wood, and I'm trying to uh, create the wood to be hand hewn so it has a lot of character, uh, so it just doesn't look like it's a brand new post or a brand new beam. Excuse me. Okay. So to clarify then, the, I, th I do think that the current application does state that it will have steel columns and corbels, but you're saying that it will actually be wood. Yeah, no, the, the, only, the, only, the only section that's going to be steel is the trellis, and the trellis sits in front of the uh, electrical meters and all the, uh, all, and that's just a small little structure that's uh, at the most the height of the yard wall, and that'll be steel, and that'll be covered with plants at some point. Uh, the uh, the um, there'll be no 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 it'll be okay the, yeah it'll be wood and it'll be uh, stucco you're not going to see any steel um, that which is great so that satisfies my concerns about the steel um, but now I'm a little curious just about the detailing of the wood because I don't think there's anything in the packet that really shows what you're describing. Can you repeat that question? I'm just not sure there's anything in the pack that actually shows what you're describing for the wood pergola. Um, is there? Did I miss something? I well, just would like there, to know there, what we'd be approving exactly. No, I, I, you're, uh, you're probably confusing that with the last, the first, the first proposal and the first meeting where we were going to be doing a, a post uh, and, uh, and some columns. Um, oh. That was that was because we didn't want to touch the primary facade, but now we've got the the, the building downgraded. So there's no so there's no steel, there's no no exposed steel. It's going to be stucco and wood. Just just for my own clarification, though, so you're saying there are no columns anymore. The no beams columns. are just attached to the walls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that's indicated in the packet, but I appreciate that clarification. Thanks. Further. On these last two points by board members, I, I think, you know, when we make a motion, it would be wise to address um, because in the case of item number one, those uh, steel posts and beam are still in there. And I think in terms of the repair, to be specific about the extent of the repair um, would be advantageous. Member Beachhead. Thank you. Um, I had a question about the reference to the replacement of the roof-mounted air conditioning system. Uh, the packet indicates that maybe one or two on the roof. Um, can you describe where those are and if they're visible from Johnson Lane or from Garcia Street, please? Uh, I didn't under hear what you said. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there's a reference in the packet to a new air conditioning system on the roof. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Can you tell us where that will be and what its visibility will be from the streets, Garcia and um, Johnson? Yes, we, we're making a very conscious effort not to have anything visible from the street right now. Uh, there is uh, a current uh, mechanical system. Um, and you, I mean, in the aerial, you could see it. I couldn't see it any, uh, I couldn't see it uh, from the street because the, the, uh, the parapets are actually quite high. So uh, we're, you're not going to see any of the mechanical system from the street. It's all going to be um, below. And then on the upper roof, we're going to foam over the, the actual ductwork. Okay. 
Okay. That, that has to be put in. That sounds uh, great. So you're not, you're just going to see the foam roof. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Okay. Uh, members? Oh, sorry. Member Aguilar. Yes, I just had one question for the applicant. Um, the reason I asked about the lighting is I'm wondering if you would be open to considering a flush recessed light in the riser of the step rather than a continuous LED strip. Uh, I do recognize the need for the lighting um, as a safety precaution at the steps, um, but I think the flush fixture in the riser might be more appropriate for this district. Uh, could you explain that system, how that works? Yeah, so it's, it's one fixture and it sits flush in the riser of the stair. Um, so you typically, you know, I'd, I would have to look at a lighting plan, but you typically have, you know, two or three of these in the length of the stair. You'd have to look at the specifications of the fixture, um, but so you, you'd have accents of lights rather than a continuous LED strip running the length of the stair. Okay, now um, one, one of the concerns I have that is because um, the, some of the steps are not even like four inches, and if we're going to do the nosing, but mm -hmm. the, the detail I've done before, which because uh, I, I don't want to be able to see the, the light source myself, is I, I run at the nosing, I run some flashing, uh, and it, it covers the light source so that uh, you're just basically getting the shadow on, on the on the uh, on the riser, and you're not going to. I don't. I don't really want to blind the, uh, you know, the client with with the uh, lights. Um, now, if there is space, because uh, I think they usually require four inches high, and I don't know if I have four inches on all my steps, uh, so uh, then I could consider that if I if I have that if I have that clearance. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, with four inches. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure that you will, but if you could check that out as an option, it would be appreciated. No, I, I, w I would consider that. I, I really want that. I just want it to be safe. That's the, the most important part. Sure. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, members of the public, either online or in person, wishing to speak on this case. Just no, no, no members of the public. Like online. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Um, Stephanie Beninato, PO Box 1601, Santa Fe. Um, I find it really hard to know what is being actually approved here. I don't find the drawings to be at all clear. And it seems like there's a lot of confusion on the part of the board members as to what you're really looking at. I'm wondering if you shouldn't actually ask for a resubmittal with uh, in, um, updated drawings. And the other thing is, um, and I appreciate Ms. Aguilar's um, interest in lighting. I think it's really important. Um, and I am not really surprised because it's been happening, but really lighting came to the board. It's an important part of the design. And to just, again, give it to staff, we have lots of lights now that are maybe, maybe having, a, you know, where the light doesn't go up, but it definitely goes out. There's really no consideration of actually downlighting as opposed to outlighting. And um, maybe if these things came to the board, there'd be a little more consideration, just like the explanation about the LED lights, because LED is really blinding. Um, but if you have some flashing over it, then maybe it does become less um, uh, blinding in a way. And um, that kind of detail, that kind of discussion, I think is really important for the board to have. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Any other public comments? Um, seeing none, I will bring this back to the board. Um, if there's more discussion, we can have more discussion. If not, um, I would entertain a motion that addresses uh, the correction in the scope outlined in the staff report about the steel post and beam, um, the repair of the adobe wall, that scope, uh, the visibility of the AC units, um, as well as um, the uh, visibility of the light fixture source. Anyone would like to make a motion? 
I'll give it a shot. Thank you. Uh, in case 2022-005183-HDRB at 571 Garcia Street, I move to approve the application with the following uh, corrections to the staff report and conditions to the motion. Uh, that the pergola that would be constructed completely of wood, the wood beams, um, the reference to the steel post and beam structure in the staff report is in error. Um, I believe the drawings accurately reflect the, the pergola as um, proposed. Uh, that the trellis material be the only additional steel um, structure added um, in this application that the new AC units or any rooftop appurtenance be screened such that they are not visible from either Garcia Street or Johnson Lane, and that the applicant consider the suggestion of member Aguilar Majano uh, for hidden recessed lighting that is not an LED strip. Member Beachside, the repair of the adobe wall. Thank you. And that the repair of the adobe wall, as summarized in the staff report and the application, is actually a stucco application over the existing adobe wall that will no longer be exposed. Uh, and that that stucco match the existing stucco color of the house and be cementitious in nature. Okay. We have a very thorough motion. Yes, in seconds. Wonderful. Well uh, done. Thank you, board members. Uh, Melissa, member, a roll call. Yes. Member Aguilar Medrano? Yes. Member Berkeley? Yes. Member Beachside? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Yes. Member Larson? Yes. The motion has been approved. Thank you, and good luck with your project. Uh, third case for tonight is 504 East Palace Avenue, downtown and east side historic district. This too is old business, uh, and this is Angela's case. Actually, I'll be making the presentation. Okay. I'm sure Guido and the members of the board. Um, Carly, I'm going to ask you to advance the slides for me, if you can, please. All right. So this building is located at 504 East Palace Avenue. It is on the southeast corner of East Delgado, I'm sorry, southeast corner of Delgado and East Palace. And um, this is a two-story building that has actually two phases of construction that are actually, that you can see that are very distinct. So the original Gonzalez house was built in 1892 and by the same family, there was an addition done prior to 1910. So the base of the house is adobe and the second story is uh, double uh, masonry. And so the original base of the house was painted something like the Pinkney Tully House over on Grant so that it looked like it was a, a masonry structure at the base as well. So the applicant is requesting the installation and construction of an elevator to serve the um, elderly family members of the household. And in order to decide what might be the best location, the, the reference point really was the addition to the rear that was constructed in 1979. And that currently um, serves as a kitchen on the, the, for the house. So you can see in the dashed red area, the sort of oval area, the proposed addition is to be located at that um, southeast corner of the building. There would be access, the, the elevator itself will be uh, approximately um, six, it would be uh, 36 square feet. So, and it's the um, elevator will, the structure itself will step off of that east side facade by six inches to help um, separate it, as well as being, um, the, the eave itself will be continued and tucked. Uh, I have asked the applicant for some additional um, differentiation in the detailing and she will be prepared to uh, maybe address that issue um, this evening. If you can go to the next slide, please. And so this is the site plan and you can see the um, Saiz Arroyo that's located to the west as well as the sort of curved turnoff of Delgado and then there's East Palace Avenue. There's parking on the site as well as a garden to the west of the building. 
And uh, immediately adjacent to the south and east are um, single family residences as well as across the street. You can go to the next slide. And this is an, uh, an illustration of the floor plan. And as you can see, it's the kitchen built, you know, area. There's a, currently a pantry there that the elevator would replace. And go to the next slide, please. And in elevation drawings, you can see the existing with that addition and then, um, or with the kitchen addition, and then the proposed illustrates that the, the elevator shaft itself will have a stucco exterior that will be matching the existing color of the stucco of that addition, 79 addition. And next slide, please. And then this is the front view. Nothing will change on the north elevation. This is just to illustrate the, you know, heights and the sort of formal uh, features that were added to um, an elegant building, the territorial revival style. And if you go to the next slide, oh, that's it. That concludes my presentation. So maybe go back one, Carly, so everybody has a point of reference. Thank you. We're happy to answer any questions. Uh, I, Heather, I, I just have one quick question. What's, what's the public visibility of, of the proposed elevator addition? Sure. So if you can go to the site plan, Carly, um, the uh, visibility from East Palace Avenue, you can see that it's sort of tucked back on the particular site itself. It will be visible to the residences to the south and to the east of the site. We did not receive any public comment, though, from those abutting property owners. And from East Palace Avenue, you may catch it just a little bit as you're driving by. But there are tall yard walls as well that further obscure things. Wonderful. Thank you, Heather. Uh, board members, any clarification questions? Yes. Thank you. I, I apologize if I missed it, Heather, but um, which is the primary facade or facades? Uh, there are no primary facades designated on the building formally. It's a contributing building in the downtown and Eastside Historic District. Sorry, I forgot to say that at the beginning of my presentation. Um, but there are no primary facades. Carly, correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Lots of different things. Carly, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, no, that's that's correct. Um, no, a primary facade has not been assigned. That's my understanding. So normally, when we um, approve an addition, it's important to know if if the addition is affecting a primary facade. In this case, there's not one designated. Um, how should we handle that? Well, in the staff review and analysis, this would not be considered a primary facade. Uh, and because it's a contributing building um, in this particular case, the, uh, the addition would not impact anything that would be qualified for primary. So, and that would be the building footprint, the original building footprint, um, and the east west and north facades could qualify. Okay, thank you. Member Benvenu. Thank you, Chair Guida. Just for further clarification on that point, does, does um, designation of a primary facade require notice in the notice to the public prior to the meeting? Yes, that is correct. I'm going to uh, uh, jump in here, though. Um, this is status designation does. The primary facade designation, we definitely notice them, but they are not. Um, it is, it's actually not very clear. It's not clearly in the board's purview that, that the primary facades fall within the board. It's traditional that we've been taking them to the board uh, for years, though. Um, but I just want to make sure that clarification that it's not, it's not specifically um, in the code that way. Ooh. Carly, if, if I may, I, I think the, that the board kind of brings forward an important point. Um, you know, it, it seems unlikely that the rear facade would ever be primary, but you know, maybe um, the east facade would. Um, is it, and, and I know that in, in the past, in other cases, we have asked to designate a facade prior to approving a change. Um, is that something we should do at this point, or do you see a path for us to make a decision on the, on this case? 
so, so if we were to, oh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, but if we were to move, um, uh, if the board feels comfortable that those that likely wouldn't be the primary facade, then that's fine. They can make a motion. Now, um, if we were to, um, typically we would go ahead and notice a primary facade um, designation for this as just as typical. Um, and but it because it's because it's it's linked so closely with status. Um, that's generally how we do it. Um, that said, it, it becomes a different kind of case if we were to combine those. And so that's the reason we never combine cases like that. Um, does that make sense? And that may not be the clearest of answers, and I can clarify a little bit if I need to. No, I, I think that's clear. I mean, we've seen this before, whether it's a designation or a, a, a status review, that's one case, and then subsequently we review uh, changes. Um, I guess my question is, you know, what's the, before we hear from the applicant, what's the board's pleasure just kind of procedurally, how, uh, if, you know, do we feel comfortable re reviewing this case without having a primary facade designated? Um, and if we do, then let's proceed. If not, then uh, let's uh, make a motion to rectify that. Yeah, I mean, I recognize this is a very small addition, and I appreciate that the applicant is um, fitting this into the current footprint. Um, but I don't feel comfortable proceeding without having a thorough review of, um, of the structure and its history. It's a very old house with a lot of character. I just don't want to uh, get into or set a precedent for making decisions without sort of the proper um, baseline, which includes on a contributing building of at least one primary facade designation. Larson. Um, yeah, I also have a comment just relating to, um, you know, additions to historic buildings. Um, you know, personally, I don't have an issue with um, this addition. I think um, according to, you know, standard recommendations for accessibility in historic buildings, um, we should consider, you know, a few factors, one of which, um, especially with this house, is the case of symmetry. And um, currently, I think you know the the structure, the uh, addition to the structure that exists um, is at one level and um, is minimally obtrusive um, from the street view, from what I can see in the packet. Um, and I guess my curiosity is just, um, you know, will having two stories um, impact the? the view. Um, also, it's important to note that another stipulation and um, making these decisions would be related to the um, impact to a primary facade, um, which I had you know, mentioned before when talking about the symmetry. Um, so in, in my opinion, I think even if this were to be two stories, um, we have to afford historic buildings. Um, you know, accessibility, and uh, I think that we all agree on that. And I think we can all agree um, that this likely would be a minimally obtrusive addition. Um, however, I think, um, you know, for our personal records, um, it's important to give each property equal consideration and, um, and research regardless of its, if it's an accessibility issue. Um, my only concern is, you know, that this is clearly needed, and um, it's clearly, um, from what I can tell from the packet, it's already presenting a hardship and, you know, reducing the amount of space in the kitchen, um, taking away from, you know, pantry space and all of that. So um, I think, you know, this, again, is afforded more consideration, but, um, you know, I wish that we could just, you know, overview that at the moment and just get, you know, everything moved forward. So, um, you know, I, I, if ideally we would do that, but I, I understand that we have to, you know, break things up and have enough time to research things. So you, you agree that we should postpone and, and hear the, the primary facade designation case? 
Yes, unfortunately I do because I believe, again, that we should afford the same amount of consideration, but I do think that it should be done as soon as possible because this is clearly a pressing matter. Thank you, M Member Larson. Uh, any other comments from the board? Member Benjamin. Thank you, Chair Guida. Yeah, I, I'm in the same position. It's something of a procedural formality at this stage, I think, because the project seems eminently approvable. Um, but for the record, it does seem that we would be um, skipping a step to be approved in the project as submitted without knowing whether or not it's affecting a primary facade and exceptions are needed. Um, you know, from a site visit, it was clear that the street facing frontage on the north would clearly be a primary facade, but it's entirely possible that the east facing elevation would be a primary facade in addition, in which case this proposal would have some impact. Um, so it, it feels like even the last addition that was made for the kitchen uh, should have had a primary facade designation before that was done. And so I don't think we should be in a position of repeating the same mistake twice. So unfortunately, I do think we need to go through that process before the application could be considered. Well said. Um, Larson. Thank you. Yeah, I just have one more comment to add. And um, that's, you know, I think we have to allow an amount of, of flexibility. Um, and I just want to be clear on that, you know, I think even if we were to designate, um, you know, one of the other elevations as, you know, primary, um, you know, we we should also consider that there should be an amount of flexibility or exception granted um, for this kind of case. So um, I would just request and staff's report that, um, you know, we have a very thorough, you know, accounting for all of the historic fabric and, um, you know, a clear chronology. Um, yes. Heather, yes. We have members of the board. Um, with reference to the designation of primary facades, um, you know, the, this building is a contributing building, and um, typically when there's a status change, those primary facades are really important in informing the way forward. But there is no status change that's being proposed in this particular case. I do understand and hear the concerns of the board, um, and you know, part of it may be that it's been a long time since I've been a board staff member. Uh, but you know, needless to say, staff from a staff recommendation standpoint, the facade to which is being attached would not be considered primary because an addition has been made to it and has been altered already. So. Um, if the, it is the pleasure of the board, one of the things we can do to accommodate for accessibility is it, um, the board may act on this tonight and we could bring back the primary facade designation to make sure that it's part of the record. But certainly it's, it's up to you and the pleasure of the board as to the process you'd like to make. Heather, what is the soonest, and, and Carly, what is the soonest we can hear this case if we do postpone it? September 13th. So, um, but we'll, you, you all can think about that and we'll hear from the public and I guess the applicant. Well, um, well, I was going to suggest that if, if it is the board's direction to postpone the case that we do not hear the, uh, the design presentation tonight, that we postpone um, and hear both this, the primary facade case and this design case in the correct sequence uh, at a date certain. Yes, Member Benvenu. Chair Guida, just one clarification, Heather. Um, I agree that the back elevation, I can't imagine being designated as primary facade, but isn't it true that this would require an exception if the east elevation were designated as primary because it's not set 10 feet back? So it has been the practice of the board, um, board member Benvenu, uh, Chair Guida, uh, that the um, primary facades can be done in components, not just an entire elevation. So that begs the question, would you designate that kitchen addition as primary there on that east elevation, or would it be the footprint of the original house, the hipped box? So, um, and staff's recommendation, it would be the footprint of the original house, not necessarily the kitchen addition, because 
if we find that it does not have those contributing elements uh, from a historic standpoint that would cause for it to be designated as primary. Um, uh, Heather, I believe the question though is that, um, that if the addition isn't within 10 feet of the that uh, hips box, well, that one facade of the hip box, and I believe it is within the 10 feet, but it is set off. Um, no, never mind. Um, I was thinking of something else. But it would be within 10 feet of that uh, facade. So technically, it would end up requiring an exception. So if we want to place this on the same hearing, we want to do a status review, or not a status review, a primary facade designation, and a um, and this addition on the same hearing, then we this just puts the staff in a position to make a very informed choice on which facade we think would be chosen as primary, and then to apply an exception or not to apply an exception. We generally, I go the route of applying an exception in case the board chose that that facade. Um, I think that's answering that. Um, I remember being the news that uh, yes, did I hit you. the nail on the head there? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Carly. Um, what is the pleasure of the board? I would move to postpone to the next meeting for a status review and re and consideration of the application. Okay. Do we have a motion then? For I, I'm, I still move. Okay. You should have a second. Um, Melissa, may we have a roll call vote, please? Member Aguilar Medrano? Yes. Member Berkeley? Yes. Member Beachside? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Yes. Can I just ask if I said for a status review or for a primary facade designation? Because it, the motion should read for a primary facade designation. If I said the opposite, just please correct that. Okay. Okay. I vote yes. Uh, Member Larson? Yes. The motion has been approved. Okay. And this is for a date certain, September 13th. Um, uh, apologies to the applicant, um, I, I, we understand that, that, you know, the delay is not um, desirable. Um, yes, please, come to the podium and be sworn in. Do you swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. Um, I just wanted to comment, oh, excuse me, that I have been on this case since February. I've been through three case planners. Never did anyone mention a primary facade designation until tonight. So it was a hardship to my client and her elderly parents. So I just wanted to make that comment. Understood and heard, Ms. Wagner, we appreciate you sharing that. I understand primary facades and the significance of it, but can we move this along faster? It's clear that the staff is putting this on the next available hearing. Thank you. We are not hearing this case. Um, you may make a comment later in the hearing. Okay, let's move on to the next case. Um, under new business, 465 Camino de las Animas. Uh, this is listed as Angela's case. Oh, this one is postponed, I apologize. Um, 634 Garcia Street, number 19, uh, also listed as Angela's case. But I will be presenting in this particular okay. case, Chair Guida, members of the board. Um, this this site is located within the Ann Webster compound. It is off of Garcia Street and is on the north, I'm, I'm sorry, southeast corner of the, the compound itself. Um, unit number 19, you can see here, circled in red. And please go to the next one. And this is an illustrative illustration of the, the plat itself for the compound, if you can go to the next one. So this is the 
elevation that is being considered for a primary facade designation. Although there was an addition, you can see the portal here um, that was done in the 1990s. Much of the elevation remains unchanged. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. The challenge of the site is that there's a lovely garden, and so it's sort of hard to get photographs that, that you can read easily, except close to the windows. So there are historic windows that are located on this elevation. You can see there on the west elevation as well as the mirror um, on the left-hand side there of underneath the portal is another historic window. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, there are windows, though, that are all along that west elevation, and you can see small windows that are, um, you can see the footprint here, that are at the front of the building. Um, they're identified as A and B if you look at the um, proposed floor plan. Um, those were smaller windows that have been changed over time, uh, and portions have been infilled at the field visit. We could see that. and so. Ray Patterson did a, 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 an analysis of the windows over the entire structure of the house and found that these windows were not considered historic, were not historic. So the applicant is proposing to re restore those windows to their original um, configuration. So even though it was on a primary facade, if it were the pleasure of the board, in this particular case, um, they are restoring the windows as they were uh, originally within the building. There are other windows that are being proposed for replacement on the building, and they primarily are not on the primary facade. In fact, aren't on the primary facade. Um, and there was once a wood shed that was converted into a dining room. There are openings there in that corner over there on the left-hand side of the screen there where um, there's French doors and then also um, there have been some uh, uh, changes that have been made over the years on the, what would be the south elevation where the double French doors are being proposed. That was once a large glazed window that had since been uh, removed and replaced with doors. So that is a non historic change where the door is being proposed um, for, ch for changing as well as some of the other windows on that um, East elevation uh, that are not publicly visible and are not being recommended for primary facade designation. And if you go to the next slide, please. And so this is an elevation of the existing building as well as proposed. And you can see on the primary facade, none of the opening sizes will change. The front door will remain. Um, that's not going to be changed. Beyond, you can see um, one of the French doors there uh, from the dining room. That may be changed. That door may be changed. Um, and it's slated as such. Uh, and then, but it's a relatively new door. And then if you continue to the next slide. Um, let's see here. Um, this is underneath the portal, uh, and that would be sort of south-facing in that interior, interior courtyard that um, won't change, as well as the French door that I was just recently explaining to you on that south elevation. Uh, that was once a very large plate glass window, divided light, that has since been replaced with doors um, that are not historic alterations. And um, this final slide illustrates some of the other windows that are not historic staff agrees with the assessment that Ray Patterson made. Um, and so therefore, the, the primary windows for preservation on that western elevation are the ones that are recommended by Ray Patterson as well as by staff for preservation. And then those windows A and B um, being restored and rebuilt as they were historically. With that single glaze, single panel glaze, it's still same style, but just rebuilt. And that concludes the staff presentation. Heather, a, a clarification. Um, 
It says that in the staff report that it is proposed, number one, that the west elevation be designated as a primary facade. Is is it the case that there are no primary facades designated right now? Yes, the, the, there is no um, individual building historic um, inventory form. There is only one for the compound. And right. so this individual building does not have its own um, inventory form. So. Okay. Um, so it has not been designated. It has not been designated. So, but, the, but the compound is contributing? Yes. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I guess related to our last case, um, Carly, a question for you. I mean, is, is this okay that, that, that in terms of its noticing, we're properly noticed to both designate a primary facade um, in this case and um, these changes? Well, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, so technically, we're, we're seeing the primary facade. We would separate these two. They always have to be separate. But if the um, applicant supplied a, a, um, a window assessment, as is, was stated, um, and none of these are, um, and I believe, that, uh, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong, um, these are not historic windows that are being replaced, all of them? That is correct. Then <clears throat> this actually ends up being an administrative approval. We, um, what the board really needs to rule on tonight is the primary facade designation. From there, we will take and we can do the administrative approval and assess the windows properly. Um, by combining them, it does create um, logistical problems with the case information. Um, and then we've just talked about how we would like to combine everything, but not the kind of cases that they are. Um, <clears throat> oh. So I hope that. So you're proposing that this is a, what's on the table is a facade designation and nothing else? Yes, Chair. Uh, okay. Due to the fact that the rest of it just becomes administrative approval that can be done directly after this hearing. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Board members, yes. Um, just a side. clarification. Um, the, the window assessment does say that windows C, D, and E are historic, and those are on the west facade that's proposed as primary. And that would have to come back to the board separately. Yes. If those were replaced, but those aren't being proposed as being replaced. They're being repaired. That's correct. And that, I'm sorry, that could be done administratively. Is that right? Oh, yes. Sorry for the confusion, um, Chair uh, Member Bishite. Yes, that um, also administrative approval for repairs. Okay, thank you. Member Larson. Um, yeah, just to be clear, the, the language says to restore Windows A through F, um, so I think we should be very clear as to how that defines. Um, there's a difference between repair and restore. Restore would imply that we were returning to um, a historic appearance, and repair would be that we were repairing what was already there. Heather, the intent is to repair? We can defer to the applicant Okay. to answer that question. Okay, we will do that. Um, Member Beachhead. Apologies, just one more um, clarification on the staff report. I believe the, the agenda notices an exception for the removal of historic material. Um, is that an error? Is there an exception required? Yes, I, these captions were written a, a while ago, and um, there has been a change in the application. And so, um, you know, there had been conversations about some windows being removed that are actually going to be repaired. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, if there are no other comments from the board, we are hearing this case. I would invite the applicant to now come to the podium, please. This is good. Is this good? Yes. Okay. So, questions, please. I think the first question and, and what's on the table for review tonight is the primary facade designation. Do you agree with staff's recommendation of West Facade? Correct, yes. Okay. And then I just thought we could do both uh, parts tonight. That's what I was told. 
But if it can be admit, staff approved, then we'd love to move forward. It sounds like we're going to review tonight what can be approved by the board and then move forward. And if it's if it's the case that it can be removed, reviewed administratively, then that will be done. Uh, I think the other clarification um, was the intent um, to either repair or restore historic windows. What is what is the intent here? Um, well, I have a question. Ray Patterson said that uh, windows C, D, and E are the only windows that are historic, and he would recommend that you to repair those as is, exactly the same, single glazing, putty at the mountains. Okay. But A and B have been changed and rebuilt so many times that he recommended that we replace them in kind. They'll pro they probably won't come out of a catalog. They'll have to be built mm -hmm. just to be exactly the same. Okay. But that was my understanding. So mm -hmm. E and E, we will repair, restore. Everything else, uh, I was told we could replace. Thank you. Thank you. Member Larson. Um, question for staff. If that is the case, if they are replacing in kind, um, that can still go through administrative approval? Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, thank you, um, uh, Chair and Member Larson. Um, so, um, if uh, for historic windows, um, they have those have to be repaired. Just to use clear code language, um, those have to be repaired, um, and then for uh, otherwise, they would have to go to the board if they're being replaced. But if they're not historic windows, then and they provide a proof, as this assessment is stating, then they can replace. Um, and if the if these windows have been replaced in kind, the replacement would be in kind to the 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 historic windows of the house. Yes, and that is administrative approval. But replacement comes to the board, with exceptions, generally. Thank you, Chair Guida. It's, uh, Carly, is there any reason why uh, we can't just designate a primary facade and then board approve the requested repairs and replacements just to avoid the applicant having to go through the additional step of seeking administrative approval? You can. I mean, it would save probably us time. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, um, formality here, Chair, um, Member Van Vinu. And that would save us time. Um, but yes, I mean, um, I will say just we don't want to establish precedent that this always takes place to the board, but otherwise, Understood. that sounds great. Sure. I understand. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments or questions from the board? From Ms. Wagner. Ms. Wagner and oh, member Arson. Um, I just wanted to thank you for, you know, doing as many repairs as you can with these windows. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, want to take the avenue, the easy route to you know, replace everything and have it all uniform and new. So I just want you to know that we recognize and really appreciate the effort to, you know, be more sustainable and to, you know, respect the historic fabric. That's our intention. I think you probably have answered with that response, but I just want to be sure for um, some of these windows include a, a wooden lintel and a wood sill um, and a deep inset. Are those um, characteristics being maintained in the restoration or the repair? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear anything. All right. Um, for example, windows A and B include a wooden sill and a wooden lintel and a deep inset. Will those elements be preserved in the replacement? They will be rebuilt. We are proposing for them to be rebuilt. Got it. Thank you. Regular. That was my same question. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, Ms. Wagner, any, anything further before we take this to public comment? I'm sorry, repeat? Anything further before we go to public comment? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, members of the public wishing to comment on this case? Uh, Stephanie Benanato, P.O. Box 1601, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, I do appreciate that um, this applicant is trying to 
uh, restore and repair windows, even ones that have been uh, changed out and perhaps are not considered historic. I do believe that, of course, you do have to designate a primary facade first before you look at what's going on, and then depending on that primary designation, whether there are exceptions that it would be needed. Um, it seems that um, if the windows have been, I, it's unclear to me because staff keeps saying it, well, the windows aren't, new, aren't old, and, but it's not just the windows, it's the opening itself. So are the, is the opening being preserved? I'm, I'm thinking yes from what I'm hearing, but I think that's the question is, is the window opening historic and is the window opening being preserved? Now there are obviously places where there were windows and now there are doors. So whether they replace them with a door or not is probably not important to this board at this point uh, out of your purview. Um, but I have to say that this meeting and the whole agenda and the presentations by staff have been incredibly confusing, incomplete, and it seems that, in a sense, they're just telling you all to go home because they can make everything, decide everything, including primary facades, administratively. Thank you. Stephanie. Um, do we have any other comments from the public, either in person or online? Uh, Chair, we have none online. I do want to just make a, a comment very quickly based yes, on the purview. Um, I did not say that staff was assigning primary facades. I just want to address Stephanie's um, question. Um, I did state that it is not in the code purview. Point taken, but um, as for clarity, we bring primary facades to the board currently, but it is not recognized formally in the code, just for clarification. Thank you very much. Um, board members. Um, we um, have a motion, please, uh, that addresses certainly the primary facade designation and uh, the board's pleasure on uh, approving uh, the remaining elements. And I would ask the maker of the motion to be very clear on the uh, on, on what we're approving, what the scope of work is. Member Benvenu. Thank you, Chair. We don't make a motion. In case number 2022-005-689-634 Garcia Street, number 19, I would move that the west elevation be designated as the primary facade. And while recognizing that um, board approval is not strictly needed and administrative approval could be granted for the following. Nonetheless, in the interest of efficiency and for the sake of the applicant not having to return for administrative approval, I would add that the board also approves uh, restoration of windows A through F on the west elevation and replacement in like and in kind of windows G through J and doors two through four. Number Larson. Um, I'll second with a friendly um, addition that um, we clarify the west elevation is being selected as the primary facade due to the number of character defining features um, that still communicate the history of the building that are worthy of preservation, um, even with that addition of the portal added in 2005. Accepted. Member Larson, do you want to speak to restoration versus repair? Yes, um, we should clarify that restoration would imply um, re or, uh, returning the window to its historic um, function and form, um, and repair would indicate re re um, repairing in kind um, to the current appearance of the window today. Um, my only concern about accepting that is that the, the ordinance only speaks to repair or repair and restore or repair or I think repair and restore. So it's not clear to me that the ordinance contemplates that distinction, but I defer to staff. I just don't want to add something that we don't have a legal basis for. Oh, so Carly or 
Member of staff, is there in your mind a distinction between repair and restore as set forth in the ordinance for historic windows? Um, thank you, uh, Chair Member Bundemir. Our um, ordinance really recognizes in, in those definitions, the way Mem Member Larson is describing, our ordinance does not um, really recognize restoration and define restoration uh, appropriately. Um, it recognizes repair. Um, so uh, the uh, distinction is, is, is helpful, but the way we tend to use our words and board motions until we have this as a definition and potentially a code revision um, is that uh, you would describe to return it to its um, to a, a historic um, uh, is historic uh, close to a historic back, uh, historic original or something of that nature. That's been the way the board has been um, working around that issue, just because we don't have it defined in our codes. Um, but I will be taking notes of our code. Okay. <laughs> With that. Uh, Shall we then modify the motion to uh, indicate that the historic window should be repaired to their to the historic original condition? Yes. Um, so to correct my earlier statement about repair versus restoration, um, I would like to indicate instead that um, we are repairing to the um, historic appearance. Accepted. Everybody said. Thank you. Um, Member Beeman, no, I understood the applicant to end the application, the window assessment, to, to, to say that the windows C, D, and E um, of the primary facade in your, as, as of your motion um, are historic and that those would be repaired. But the others on the same facade, which are A, B, and F, would be replaced in kind with a rebuild of the the wooden sill, lentils, and replication of the current inset. The staff report indicates uh, the applicant is proposing to restore windows A through F and to replace windows G through J. Yes. Please. I think that was our um, our proposal before we were told to hire Ray Patterson mm. for his opinion. And his opinion is that only C, D, and E are historic and that we can restore to a, a historic condition. All the other doors and windows we can replace. Yes, you're correct. Yes, that's exactly what his report says. Yes, thank you the clarification. So to that, the motion should be modified to indicate that C, D, and E should be repaired as indicated, and the rest uh, may be replaced in like and in kind. Yes. Okay. We have a clear motion. Okay. Um, let's then do a roll call vote, please. Member Aguilar Medrano. Yes. Member Berkeley? Yes. Member Beachside? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Yes. Member Larson? Yes. The motion has been approved. Thank you. Thank you, board members, for your clarity, and, and Ms. Wagner, thank you for your patience. Good luck with your project. Um, okay, final case of the evening is 815 East Palace Avenue, number 29. Uh, Carly, this is your case. Do you want me to present it, Carly? Um, I can uh, go uh, for it. Um, we've been doing a little tag team with me being out, so I'll go ahead and take it. So this is um, this is a part of a large compound. It's 815 East Palace Avenue, uh, number 29. Um, it is, um, while it's a part of a large compound, it is um, non contributing. I get my cursor to go down. Um, we're looking at the front gate on the south side here. Um, here are the elevations. You can see it's two story in some areas, and one story in the other, with some grade change around the site. 
Um, so the north side, you can see the north side here, and then the east side. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of the shed because this is one of the large reasons, or one of the more sizable reasons that this is coming before us tonight. Um, so um, here, here's our shed we're looking at. Um, the, the application here is in response to a red tag. There was a um, administrative approval uh, written um, early in the year uh, for a certain amount of scope. The scope was, went, they went beyond, the company that was fired went beyond the scope and moved several things without seeking the approval and going through the board. So the structure is one of the, the, the um, stucco shed here is the rebuild of it and removal and then move it, removing it to another site, another area, and that is what really triggers it to go to the board. So um, what we're looking at is um, a stucco shed here. Uh, this is another part of the proposal, a high uh, a 42 inch high stone wall. Uh, we're looking at a six foot uh, coyote fence. Um, and we are, and then we've got some landscape work of regrading of steps, uh, but really the new coyote fence falls within that scope as well. So this is the six foot coyote fence. Um, uh, this, uh, the coyote fence is in the back here, the six foot is in the backyard, um, and all the, the newer coyote fence uh, portions are um, all, all set from the street. Um, so that, that six foot, um, we are recommending for approval, um, but we do have um, the, the main issue that we're seeing tonight um, is just the, the stucco shed that's getting built in this place. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and go to, um, the, here's the proposed floor plan, um, and uh, you'll see the stucco shed right here. Um, and it shows up again right here on these. This is the south and this is the east facade. Okay. And then uh, we are looking at the north uh, facade here and then uh, the west facade. Um, and with that, let me go ahead and turn it over to um, the applicant. Uh, uh, unless I can answer any questions at this moment. Well, just a quick clarification. What of, I, I saw in the report that the property was red tagged. Um, what of the work that we're considering tonight, what portions of the work have already been completed? Um, I think we are at the point where I'd like to defer that to the applicant because okay. I know we have a certain amount completed at this point. Um, and when the red tag was issued. So. Understood. Board members, any questions for Carly? Okay. Just one quick yes, Heather. on the staff report. Yes. Um, the number on the staff report is 19. It's listed as 19, but it is 29. And the accurate number is on the agenda. So just okay. a clerical error on that. Okay. Thank you, Heather. We'll, we'll make that part of the motion. Um, applicant. <laughs> Please come forward and be sworn in. Do you swear under the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. Christopher Purvis, 518 Old Santa Fe Trail. Hi, Chris. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, the clarification I provide is so we got permission to stucco and reroute, and then six months or a year later, the owner hired a can we ask you to speak more directly into the microphone, please? Thank you. Is that better? Yes. So the applicant hired a landscape company, Lucid Landscaping, and had them do some work. And they assured him we don't, they didn't need permission to move a fence or move something else. And he didn't talk to me. And so here we are. So apologies to the board. Um, to know what is already done, they, they moved the fence, so they rebuilt the fence and moved it over to the condo, so apparently it was um, somewhere between six inches and a foot and a half off the, what you would call a condo property line. So with the permission of their neighbor, they moved, they rebuilt it 
in place. That's already done. And there was a shed that was, I think you can see on your drawing, it was kind of towards the front of the property and they moved it to the back and it kind of half fell down and they put it back together. And that's there. That's not what we're proposing because that doesn't need zoning. So when he brought it to me, I talked to Lonnie. She pointed out that you know we can put it in the location it is now being proposed, which is now attaching it to the lower portion of the house in the least visible area. So none of that work is, none of the stucco shed is done, although there is a shed there that needs to come down. And, and that's the full scope of work, right? The, the six-foot coyote fence and the 48-inch high stone wall are, have already been built. Yes, there's, and steps. There's some. You know, they basically rebuilt some steps. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Board members, questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, yes. Well, I recognize the work has already been done. Just for record purposes, I think it would be helpful to indicate the type and the color of the stone that was used to construct the wall. And then referring to the wall um, detail, I believe the detail has it indicated as two foot four inches, even though there's one that is 48 inches, I believe. So that detail could just be revised to either say four foot max or very uh, referred to site plan, that would be helpful. Uh, then my last comment is also just regarding the coyote fence detail. It's labeled as coyote fence and gate elevation. However, I don't see a gate indicated in that elevation, so if that could be added. Um, and then maybe some notations about the size and material of the vertical posts that were used for the fence, whether those were also of cedar um, or metal. That's all. So would you like me to make that verbally, or would you like to just correct the drawing and take it to staff? Um, Chair Guida, can you help? Um, what would you recommend in this case? Can it be a verbal confirmation, or can it be something that is submitted to staff just for record purposes? Um, we, we, have, we have two ways of going about this typically, and board members can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong as well as staff. Um, you know, if it's relatively minor, it's something that we acknowledge in the motion. Um, and uh, if it's something that is a substantial difference in, in appearance, um, and it is something that, that the board is clear about um, in terms of dimensions, appearance, materials, and stuff like that, and in those instances, we do ask for um, the applicant to update drawings and submit them to staff. If it is a design change, then we ask the applicant to return. Um, and hear the case again. Um, so, uh, to me, you know, this and this may kind of kind of fall on the edge. Um, to me, you know, if, if it's something that I think could be addressed in the in the motion, as we often do with details that kind of either are below the level of drawing, you know, we'll add well radius corner or make sure all of the verticals for the coyote vents are interior to the wall. Um, and so on. So, um, what, whatever you like. Yeah, I agree that I'm comfortable with that. If you can just give us a verbal confirmation of some of those detailed elements of those, um, and then we can just include it in the motion. Thank you. Member of the so the stone is a, a gray, kind of square hewn stone that both builds both the steps and the wall. And the uh, vertical atias are two to three inches in diameter and they have their bark on. Okay, thank you. I think that, that covers everything. Okay, thank you. Didn't you also ask about the gate? Oh, um, yes, can you just confirm that the gate is also um, blends in with the fence and that it's also unpeeled, same diameter, and if you could just um, clarify the width of the gate as well. The gate is approximately three feet wide and is made from the same material as the fence. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, board members, uh, any additional comments? 
for the applicant. Chris, thank you for going through all that. Um, do we have any members of the public, either online or in person, uh, wishing to testify tonight? In this case, seeing as we do not, I'll throw that back to the board for a thorough motion. Member Aguilar, would you care to make a motion? All right, I will take a stab at this. In case number 2022-005687-HDRB, I move to approve um, this case. And I would like to add the note that the applicant indicated that the stone wall was constructed of gray squared, um, gray hued square stone and that the fence and gate were made of latias with the bark on of two to three inch diameter, and that the fence and the gate um, matched each other in style. Do we have a second, Amber Larson? Um, I'll second with the clarification that the address is 815 East Palace Avenue, number 19. Accepted, thank you. Member Benjamin? Um, uh, oh, Heather. Actually, the clarification is it's number 29, so right. the staff report is an error. It's not the agenda, so but thank you. Okay. <laughs> Member President. So, uh, if I could get a further clarification of the point about um, asking for details about the fences is, is a very good one because we do get into details about coyote fences when they come before us. So just two more issues. One is um, are the uh, structural members on the inside or the, in or the exterior of the fence? Member Benvenu, the, the, that varies. They're on, it's on two sides when it gets to the back of the property in the Arroyo. They're on the back. They're on the side, they're on the inside. Okay. And are the uh, tops of the Latias um, staggered? Yes, they are. Okay. That's all I needed. Thank you. So we have a motion. We have a second. Um, we have a roll call vote, please, Melissa. Yes, Member Aguilar Medrano. Yes. Member Berkeley. Yes. Member Beachside. Yes. Member Bienvenu. Yes. Member Larson. Yes. The motion has been approved. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, okay. So uh, next on the agenda is discussion items from staff. Carly, Heather, do we have any discussion items tonight? Uh, I don't have a discussion item, Chair, but I do have one um, uh, one food for thought, uh, something to take away. Uh, we will need to do board elections, um, so I will be sending out an email. Um, we um, it, it's, it's in our code that we yearly need to elect our chair and our vice chair, and we are now missing our vice chair. So please expect that to be coming forward to you. And, and Carly, to clarify, we need all members of the board present for those elections. That is correct. Okay. Um, if that's all, we'll move on to matters from the board. Members of the board, any comments or discussion items tonight? I'll well, just say thank you to the new board members for their participation tonight. You guys had great input. We appreciate it. Yes, very well done. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, our next meeting uh, for the Historic District Review Board is Tuesday, September 13th, uh, 2022. Um, if we have a motion to adjourn, we can adjourn. Um, so moved by Larson. We should have a second. Roll call vote, please. Member Aguilar Medrano? Yes. Member Berkeley? Yes. Member Beachside? Yes. Member Bienvenue? Yes. Member Guida? I'm sorry. Member Larson? Yes. The motion has been approved. Thank you. And it's 724, and we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>